I'm sharing 50 brilliant home hacks everyone should know. Hacks for closets, the kitchen, cleaning hacks, and how to make your home smell amazing. These genius ideas will change your life. One fun fact about me is that I have identical twin boys. They are awesome. However, the room doesn't always smell awesome. So a quick way to freshen up their space is by simply taking a dryer sheet and a fan. What you do is you just take the dryer sheet, you put it on the back side of the fan, turn the fan on, and within minutes, that room smells like clean laundry. I'm sure you know that baking soda is a great odor absorber for your fridge, but did you know that oats can do the same thing? Just get a bowl of oats, leave it uncovered, and put it in your fridge, and it will absorb all of those nasty food odors. Leave a bowl of oats in the fridge for four to five days to remove odors. You can also keep them in the fridge regularly to prevent odors. Just replace them every seven to 10 days. Here's another way to use the fan to freshen up your room. Get a car freshener, take it out of the package, put the little clip on the back, and then you can snap it onto the grids that are on the front side of your fan. Turn the fan on and within minutes, your room will smell like, in my case, vanilla. The next thing that we're gonna do is make a cotton ball sachet. So you can put it in your sock drawer or around your house to make it smell nice and fresh. So first off, I got these organza bags at the Dollar Tree. It's a package of eight and I got them in the party section. And then I also already had these cotton balls. I'm gonna put some of these essential oils on my cotton balls. If you don't have essential oils, then you can use some body sprays or perfumes and that will work great too. I decided to go with a lemon scented essential oil. That way if I put it in my husband's sock drawer, he won't be offended that it smells like perfume. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add maybe two to three drops on each little cotton ball, and then I'm gonna place it in my bag. And because this is an organza fabric, it's not a solid fabric, it's kind of more like mesh, the scent will be able to come out of it easily. I placed a few sachets throughout my home, behind couch cushions, in sock drawers, and between towels in my linen closet. Here's a quick travel tip. The next time you're packing up your luggage, just put in a few dryer sheets in between your clothes. Or you could just tuck in one of these scented sachets, and when you end up at your final destination, your clothes will smell fresh and clean. These IKEA plate holders are so versatile. Of course, you can use them to stack your plates, have them stand straight up, but there are so many other uses for these. You can use them to hold your cutting boards. I have quite a few marble cutting boards as well, and I don't like to stack them on top of each other because I don't want them to chip. So this plate holder is perfect to stack them up so that they are stored safely. You can also use them to hold your pot lids, and that's what I'm going to be doing with this today. My pots and pan drawer looks a little scary right now. A lot of times things just kind of get shoved in there to be quickly put away, and it ends up looking like this. Yeah, it's not pretty. So it's time for a clean out and a quick organization. So after I had everything pulled out of this drawer, I wiped it down. This is a great time to do some cleanup. I washed it and got all the little crumbs off. I stacked my pots inside of each other size-wise and then added them back onto my shelf. Now it's time to utilize the plate holder. So I got my lids and I placed them in our plate holder. I just slid them in between the wooden dowels and organized them starting with the largest lid and worked my way down to the smallest. This shelf setup is a 100% turnaround from our starting point. I can see each one of my pans, I can see where the lids are, and the shelf can be easily pulled in and out. No more topsy-turvy pans and lids. Now let's move one shelf over to our cabinet with all of the mixing bowls and measuring cups. Now, I don't know about you, but I have like seven sets of measuring cups. I don't know why, I think that's one of those things I collect over the years. I'm not sure, do you have a whole bunch of measuring cups? Anyways, okay, so right now, this is how the measuring cups are stored. Again, it's not a pretty sight, so let's try and organize them better. Again, I'm gonna pull everything off of the wire shelf 
And today I'm gonna to get my vacuum and vacuum out all those little crumbs that are in the nooks and crannies and corners and then wipe it down. That way I'm starting with a fresh clean slate. I bought some wall mounted wire racks at the Dollar Tree. They're in the automotive section and I'm going to screw these into the side walls on my cabinet so I can hang my measuring cups. So all I did was I took my drill and just made a quick small pilot hole and then I screwed in the screws to hold the hook in place. Now I can take all of my measuring cups because I have a lot and I can hang them on this hook. My measuring cups are now out of the way. They are organized. They are hung by set and size and they no longer take up precious space on the pull out shelf. On the opposite cabinet wall, I hung up another wire rack and this is where I put all of those awkward kitchen utensils like the potato masher. Oh, the potato masher. So and now that it has its new home, it can no longer be a frustration to everyone who tries to open the drawer. I've also hung a few other awkwardly shaped utensils like the giant whisks some large KitchenAid attachments, and also a small sieve. Now that everything is hung up, I can add my glass bowls back into this wire pullout shelf. Taking advantage of this unused wall space on either side of my cabinet was just what I needed to store these awkwardly shaped pieces. It's a perfect solution for misfit kitchen items. Now let's move on to this drawer right here. I keep my heavier glass and ceramic plates in drawers that are down below. That is because I do not want my children to pull heavy things off of upper cabinets and have them possibly land on their face. <laughs> it's just as plain and simple as that. So for years I have kept my heavy things in these drawers, but I want to organize them better. As you saw, I got that awesome Ikea plate holder and we're going to organize our plates inside. These plate holders are such a great way to keep your plates from sliding around every time you open or close the drawer. So to use this, you just need to twist that knob to loosen it, pull the two metal pieces apart. There are measurements on the bottom of the plate holder, so all you need to do is size it according to the size of your plate. Once it's at the perfect size, just twist that knob the other way to tighten it back up. Now all you need to do is put your plates or your bowls or whatever you want to put in there and then slide them back into your cabinet. One other bonus about these plate holders that I absolutely love is that when you are unloading the dishwasher, you can load your dishes right into this plate holder and then carry it back to your drawer. No more making several trips back and forth from the dishwasher to the drawer. It's just in one shot, load it up, put it in the drawer, shut it. You're done. I love these things. Speaking of drawers, let's move on to our miscellaneous utensil drawer. It's the one that's notorious for being a mess. It has the potato peelers and the can openers and the measuring spoons and the spatulas, all those things. You know which drawer I'm talking about. So what we're gonna do is we're going to organize that by using some Dollar Tree plastic baskets. And I'm also using a silverware tray. This tray is perfect for all of my measuring spoons and for those longer utensils that do not fit into one of those baskets. I categorized each basket with like utensils so that they would be easy to find and also easy to put away. I placed each one of my baskets and my utensil tray into the drawer and now everything is organized and categorized. Under the sink can get disorganized really quickly as well. So to organize mine, I'm going to be using a Dollar Tree caddy. I placed in some magic erasers and some smaller items. And then in the back, I'm putting some cleaning sprays that I use frequently. Next, I took another plastic Dollar Tree container I filled it with all of the other soaps and cleaning supplies that I use on a regular basis. These plastic bins are great because they contain all of your soaps. So if by chance something spills, 
it will spill into the plastic bin instead of onto the floor of your cabinet. In my Ikea haul, I bought this really gorgeous gold rod in the hopes that I would be able to fit it underneath my sink. Well, I didn't bring a measuring tape and neither did Natalie, so I bought it anyways, and guess what? It's too big. So we're gonna use our creativity and find a substitute. What I did was I just got a tension rod. I bought this tension rod at Walmart and I placed it underneath my sink. I am, however, going to be able to use those gold hooks that I bought at Ikea. I took those hooks and I placed them on the tension rod and then I was able to take my dustpan and my handheld brush on the other. These pieces are alight, so the tension rod won't fall down. And then I also added a few more hooks to place my microfiber towels on. Using a tension rod is a great way to utilize the upper portion of a cabinet because these pieces are raised up off the bottom of the cabinet, I can easily put everything back into my cabinet with plenty of space to spare. In this drawer right here is where I keep all of my oven mitts and my clean and dirty magnets for the dishwasher. And I also keep my trivets in here. So I purchased these three trivets at Ikea. They're pretty plain, as you can see, and I had to throw in a DIY in my video. You know I had to. So I took this plain one and I added a little detail on it. Let me show you how I made this. I created a card stock stencil on my Cricut. I placed it over the top of the trivet. Then I traced out the same with a fine point pin. Next, I got out my wood burning tool, went over the traced lines, to burn in the detail. It did not take me a very long at all to spruce these up. These cork trivets would be a great affordable gift or simply an easy way to customize a plain kitchen item. In this cabinet right here is where I keep all of my kiddos, plates and cups and bowls. They're plastic and they get chucked in here. <laughs> it's a mess. Things are always toppling over and falling out. So we're gonna organize that by using a Dollar Tree wire shelf. I took everything out. I put the wire shelf in. I placed the plastic plates underneath the wire shelf and then I placed the bowls on top. This shelf gives those bowls a sturdy base so that they're not gonna fall over every time you open the cabinet door. So the next time somebody needs a plate, they won't have to pull the bowls out in order to get one. A simmer pot is an all natural, inexpensive and easy way to make your house smell amazing. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit today. I'm gonna to use a crock pot instead of the stove top because my mom instincts say that a pot simmering on the stove for several hours equals danger to children. So everything that I'm gonna to add to my crock pot, you can also add to a pot and simmer it on the stove. The ingredients for the simmer pot are really simple. All you're gonna need is four cups of water. You're gonna need one tablespoon of whole cloves. You'll need one tablespoon of vanilla, two cinnamon sticks, one sliced lemon and one sliced lime. So we'll just pop those right in. And then the last ingredient is cranberries. Now it's July and so cranberries are kind of hard to come by right now. So I'm using dried cranberries and they'll work just as well. Leave off the crock pot lid and heat on low for several hours or as long as you want. If the water level gets low, just add additional water as needed. I'll leave the ingredients list in the description box below. Not only does the simmer pot make your house smell amazing, but you can make it in bulk, you can bottle it up in some mason jars, and you can give it away as gifts. The next solution is the easiest and simplest of all, and that is just to open up your windows and air out your space. I have found that bringing in an infusion of fresh air helps to clear out unpleasant aromas the fastest and it also brings in a lovely natural outdoor scent. Of course, when we're talking about a good smelling home, we have to mention candles. 
Candles are so great because you can switch them up for various seasons, for the fall or Christmas times, and then you have your classics that you love all the time. My favorite candle of all time is this Tyler candle, and it's called Warm Sugar Cookie. Every time I light it, it smells like a bakery. It just smells like home to me. Not only is vinegar a great cleaning solution, but it's also an awesome odor absorber. A couple weeks back, my husband went to go get gas in a little gas can for the lawnmower, and on his way home, a little bit of gas spilled out onto the back of his SUV. We got home and cleaned it up, but it still smelled really pungent. So what I did was I got a bowl and I filled it up with vinegar and I placed it in his car and left it there overnight. And the next morning there was a dramatic difference. So if you have a stubborn smell that just won't go away, just place a bowl of vinegar out and that might be a solution for you. If you have questionable smells coming up through your sink, just save your orange pills the ends of your lemons and limes, any of the rinds of a citrus fruit would be fantastic. Stick it down into your garbage disposal, turn it on, and it will smell like a citrus explosion from your sink. If you don't have oranges or any other citrus fruits, I actually found this sink stopper at the Dollar Tree, and it's lemon scented, so I'm gonna put it in and see how it smells, but I have a feeling it's gonna make the sink smell amazing as well. Do the shoes in your closet look like this? Let me show you how to double your storage space by using two $3 Walmart tension rods. I took the tension rods and I sized them to fit snugly inside of my shelf. I placed one tension rod in the middle back and one tension rod in the middle front. Now I've essentially created an extra shelf for my shoes. Now I can just place one row of shoes on the top of the tension rods and then I can put the other in the space below. Now if you have a span that's larger than this shelf size, what you can do instead of using tension rods is get a shower curtain rod and that will span that much further. So if you've got shoes on the ground in your closet and you want an extra shelf, try a shower curtain rod and that will give you some extra storage space as well. Do you stack up your belts like this on the top of a hanger? Well, I have done this in the past and inevitably I'm gonna need the belt at the bottom. So all of these are gonna have to come off or you have stacked so you can barely even get it on the rod. Okay, so I have a solution for that. What we're going to be using are some Dollar Tree book rings. I'm going to open the book ring and slide it through the hook on the belt. Then I'm going to get my hanger and close the book ring around the hanger and latch it. And now each belt can hang individually on my hanger, which is really convenient. And a lot of times you'll have some really small latches on your belt. And so these book rings are awesome for that because they're really thin and they'll be able to fit through uniquely shaped or small shaped belt hooks. And then when you're finished, you just place that right back on that hook and now you've got an easy way to access all of your belts. Now I know you've heard this tip before and that is to color coordinate your clothes. Why is this so important you might ask? Well, here's one reason for me that I really like color coordinating my clothes. I'm in a hurry, as I'm sure most of you are, and when I run into my closet and look for a specific pink shirt, guess what? I have my pink shirts right here. I know exactly where to go. So it saves me a lot of time and a headache because I know exactly where to find my clothing. Another tip that I have with regards to color coordination is my hangers. In my closet, I have all white hangers. The reason why I do this is because I don't really want to look at the hangers. I want to look at the clothes on the hanger. So with all white hangers, they just kind of fade into the background and the clothes really become the star. I love dangly earrings and hoops and needed a way to display them so I could easily see them. My solution to this is a Dollar Tree wire shelf. I'll simply take my earrings and I will place them on top of the wire slat. I'll just hook it right onto the wire slat with the hook on the earring 
And then I can also hang my hoops. I just open the clasp and put it around the wire slat. And of course, I also color coordinated them, silver colored and gold. And again, this is an easy way for me to be able to easily grab the earrings that I want that will match with my outfit. And it also provides plenty of space underneath so that my earrings can hang and won't get tangled up at the bottom. And then also using a shelf gives me some storage space on top and I'm placing a few pairs of sunglasses. Hanging up scarves can be tricky business. For me, when I try and hang up my scarves, I do it on the bottom portion of a hanger and unless they are 100% equally balanced, they're going to slide off. And then more often than not, they end up stacked on top of each other so I can't find the scarf that I'm looking for. My solution to this comes in the form of some Dollar Tree shower curtain rings. I will just open up this shower curtain ring, place it on the bottom part of the hanger, and then close it up. Then I will take my scarf and I will slide it through the center of the ring. So it looks like this. And now I can see each scarf individually. And again, if you're worried about your scarf falling off, all you need to do is tie it just the way that you would tie a scarf and it will stay right on that ring. Let's stay on the subject of accessories and let's move on to necklaces. I had a blank space behind my shelf right here. And what I decided to do was get a Dollar Tree wall mounted wire rack and just screw it into the wall. I needed to be able to hang my longer necklaces so they wouldn't get tangled up. And this hook is a perfect opportunity to do that with minimal effort. So by simply taking advantage of a blank wall, now I have a beautiful way to display all of my necklaces and keep them well organized. Another way to organize your closet is by categorizing it. Now let me show you what I mean by that. Over here, I have all of my sweaters. So when I use a sweater, I know exactly where to go. And again, it's color coordinated so I can easily get the color that I want in the sweater that I want. Over here, I have all of my dress shirts. Again, they are color coordinated so I can find the exact shirt in the right color that I'm looking for. Next to my shirts, I have pants. I've got short pants, I've got long pants, and again, I try and keep them as color coordinated as possible. Next to my pants on the wall with the jewelry are all of my dresses. I love dresses. Oh my goodness, if I could dress up every day, I would. <laughs> Over here, I have the dresses and they, of course, are color coordinated. And then on the other wall, I have my skirts, I have my jackets, and of course, we have our well-organized shoes. So why is this important? Well, because we're all in a hurry. And this way we can cruise right into our closet, find the pants that we want with the shirt that we want, know exactly where it is and have everything organized so it will save us a lot of time and that we can get ready in a jiffy. To make my closet feel a little more luxurious, I decided to swap out the handles that were on these cabinets. They were just some silver plain poles. I found these crystal mirrored poles at Home Goods, and I just swapped them out. You can do the same thing by switching out some hardware that you might have on your dressers or even in your room if you had a dresser there. By switching out little details like this, it makes your space feel so much more glamorous. To go along with beautifying your closet, I like to add some personal touches. I have a tassel from my great grandmother. I also have a picture of me and my sweetheart. I have some crystal bowls and a beautiful mirrored box. I'm also a very religious person, so I love to have this marble Christus in here because it reminds me to keep a strong relationship with God. And the best picture that's in this room was created by my six-year-old. She did it when she was five. And it's a picture of me and my husband. And I have rainbows and unicorns. And he has ice cream and donuts. <laughs> she also did a bunny and she 
taped them to the wall her very self. This picture will stay up for as long as I can keep it up. Adding personal touches can make your space feel unique and special to you. Do your tank tops look like this? You just kind of like add them to the hook on the hanger and inevitably you're going to need the black one that's at the bottom so everything has to come off and it's just a mess, right? I've been there. So my solution to this is to use some more of those Dollar Tree shower curtain rings. I'll open them up, I will place them on the bottom portion of the hanger, and then I can slide the strap of my tank top right through the shower curtain ring. And this is the way they look now. Look how nice that is. Again, you can add one or two to each of your shower curtain rings. You can put as many as you want, and they are so easy to access. All you have to do is just open it right up, take your tank top off, and when you're finished, you can put it back away and no more stacking up your tank tops and uh, making a mess. So this will just clean that right up. I don't know about you, but a lot of times there are things that I use all of the time. I use my scissors a lot, I use some pencils, I use my hot glue gun, I use a couple of things all the time. So I like to put these items in this caddy so I can just grab it and I know that everything is in there that I'm going to need and it's really convenient. It's small enough that I can stick it right back in the closet, but it is so convenient to have because I know that all of my essential items are gonna be in one place. This is just a plastic magazine holder, but I'm going to give it a transformation. I'm gonna flip it this way so I can put it inside of my cabinet and it can hold some things to keep them up out of the way. Again, this is from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to get some Velcro. This was from the Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to cut three rectangular pieces. I'm gonna put them on each side of my container so it kind of looks like a triangle. And then I'm going to press the sticky part down onto my container. Then I'm going to take the kind of cottony, fuzzier part that sticks to it. I'll place it right back on top and then I will remove that backing, the sticky backing. Then I'm gonna take it to my cabinet and I'm going to place it in the corner. I'm going to press it really firmly to the top of the cabinet and it will stay in place. And then I can put all kinds of things in here. I'm gonna put my stapler, I can put a calculator, I can put some things that I just need really easy access to quickly. You can put this underneath a desk I've even seen these in like a pantry where people put salt and pepper and other things like that in it. So this is a cheap way to get some organization that keeps things up and out of the way. A way to customize your pieces to fit in with your office decor is just to use some spray paint. I got these scissors and this stapler from the Dollar Tree, of course, and what I did was I wrapped the bottom of the scissors and the bottom of the stapler, the metal part, in some blue tape, took them outside, and I spray painted them gold. I let them dry, and then I removed the tape. Look at how pretty these are. This is a great way to get a custom look because if you're to buy things like that online or in the store, they can be really expensive. So for a dollar to get some customizable pieces that fit in with the gold that's in my office is awesome. And then also I'm gonna be placing them in a Dollar Tree base. Not only is this a base, but it's a pretty way to display things on your desk. You could put some pencils or some pens in here and it would be a really classy way to display them. Okay, now I think this next organizational idea is my absolute favorite. I have been doing this for years. I have a tension rod. Now this tension rod is actually from Walmart, but it was so cheap. It was only a couple of bucks. And it's a way that I like to display my ribbon. Now I have a container or Tupperware that I put a ton of ribbons in, but it just gets, just it's just a mess and I can't ever find anything. So I've used tension rods, that way I can see each individual ribbon, know exactly which one I want. I've also got some scissors on here and they have a big enough hole in the handle of the scissors that I can stick them on there. You can put all kinds of things on here. So what I'm going to do is place it inside of my cabinet. 
I'll twist it on so it's really firmly in place. And now I have some ribbons that I can see easily, choose easily, and display. My final idea is to use a Dollar Tree plate holder as a filing stand. I have files on my table and I like to get them up and out of the way. This is a good way to do it. Not only can you display files on this plate holder, but you can also put some books in there. You can also put some binders just to kind of get things up and out of the way off your desk. Also, it's a great way to, if you're reading something or if you're typing, you can put a book on here, leave it open, and it stands upright so you can see the words easily. So using a plate holder is another simple and easy way to keep your office organized. As a family of six, our refrigerator can get disorganized in a hurry. We have things jammed in there on the shelves, things topple over and spill, so I decided it's time to get our refrigerator in order. Today I'm gonna to be showing you a few organizational ideas. All of the things that I'm using came from the Dollar Tree, so it's going to be very affordable. We're gonna start off today by tackling our fruit and veggie drawer. Now when we get home from the grocery store and we unload things or finish using them, a lot of times things just get tossed back into the drawer and things get smashed because I have heavier things like halos and apples that get put on top of raspberries and mushrooms and things that can get easily bruised. So we're going to use this shelf, just a wire shelf, and I'm going to stick it inside of the drawer. It fits in there perfectly. I'm going to utilize the top and the bottom of this. I'm going to put the mushrooms underneath and then I'm going to put the thinner things like the green onion, onions and the raspberries on the top. And that way when I put in my oranges and my apples on the other side, everything is protected. Now these soda bins can be used for so much more than soda. I'm going to use these to organize my butter and my cheese and my cream cheese. They're the perfect size for a box of butter and for the cheese, so I'll just line them up so they're nice and organized. I'll slide them inside of the drawer. Not only will it keep things neat and organized, but it will prevent everything from sliding around every time the drawer is opened and shut. Have you ever had hot dog juice or meat juice leak out of the bag and get all over your refrigerator? Well, I have, and it's not fun. So a solution to that is to use this Dollar Tree dish organizer. You can just take your meats, slide them right inside, and they will stay upright. That way all the juice will stay down at the bottom where it belongs. I love using fresh herbs when I cook. The problem is, is that I bring them home from the store and they disappear into the bottom of the fruit and veggie drawer. So a solution to that is to put them in some Ziploc baggies. Now I've washed these and I put them inside and then I'm going to hang them on the side of my refrigerator shelf with these magnetic clips. I'll just clip it on, hang it up on the shelf, and not only will I remember that they are there, but it also prevents them from being smashed because they're just hanging on the side. On the opposite side, I'm clipping on an opened bag of spinach. You could also clip on bags of coleslaw or mixed greens. I like putting my bread in the refrigerator. I think it preserves it and makes it last longer than if you left it out on the shelf or in the pantry. Again, I'm going to be using this wire shelf and I'm gonna put it right on top of my bread. This way my bread is protected from being squished and it also gives me an extra shelf so I can put another fragile item right on top, which in this case is my eggs. I love entertaining friends and family with food and drink, but having your guests sit down to plates like these 
and cups like these could be a little awkward. Because although these dishes are clean, they look dirty. So today I'm going to show you a remedy of how we can take these dishes from scratched and dull and cloudy and filmy to clean. I'm using Bar Keeper's Friend. It comes in several varieties. I'm using the cleanser and polish, it's the powdered. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plate, I'm going to get it wet, and then I'm going to sprinkle the Bar Keeper's Friend all over it. My sponge has a coarse side to clean the plates and a soft side to clean the glasses. Rinse your plate and lightly coat with the cleanser. I'm using my sponge and I'm going to rub it on the surface of my plate in a circular motion. Now, dependent on how many scratches you have will determine how long you need to scrub, but on average it's about one to two minutes. Apply medium pressure as you scrub and don't forget to rub in the grooves and edges of your plate. Once you're done scrubbing your plate, rinse it. And if there's any scratches that you may have missed, just go over it again with your sponge. The first time I tried this cleaning method, I was a little skeptical. However, when I saw the results, I was amazed at the transformation. My plates look brand new. After I give my plate a final rinse, I like to place it in the dishwasher. My next solution is taking a cloudy, filmy cup like this and making it look brand new. After all, do you want to drink out of that? We will again be using the Barkeeper's Friend and we'll be using a sponge. The only difference is that we'll be using the softer side instead of the harsh green side. Rinse your cup completely and then sprinkle the cleanser on the outside and inside of the cup. I'm applying medium pressure as I thoroughly scrub all areas of the cup. Total cleaning time per cup should be about one to two minutes, dependent on how filmy your cup is. After a final rinse, hand wash in hot soapy water or run it through a dishwasher cycle. Just look at these incredible results. My glass is sparkling clean and restored to its original state. I've tried all kinds of cleaning products from dish soaps to home remedies and none have gotten my glasses to go from this to this. <laughs>